Today we're going to be talking about the Hayatoy's Exquisite Basic Burning Godzilla from Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Real quick, let's take a look at this box. It uh, very much is reminiscent of the Atomic Blast Godzilla's box, only this time there's fire and brimstone and reds, lots and lots of reds. Graphic design is my passion. It's a cool box, it's striking, it's eye-catching, it's bright, it's a box. Let's move right on over into articulation. So why am I talking about this now? Well, basically, uh, not too much has changed. This is the fourth Haya Godzilla I've talked about, the third of the updated variety, and it's good, fam. You already know. The articulation is similar to that of NECA than SH Monster Arts. It's not as articulated as SH Monster Arts. Still very damn good, though. The articulation gives you a plethora of posability options, and yeah, it's the same song and dance here. The only thing of possible note that might have been improved on since Atomic Blast Godzilla is the tail. The curves feel a little bit deeper, although that might just be a my copy thing. It might be something they actually fixed in the short amount of time it's been. I don't know. I frankly don't give a damn because it's all so very nice. I am going to give articulation and posability two solid stars because if it ain't broke, don't friggin' fix it. There's nothing to fix here. I like it is good. Alrighty, I have quite a bit to say, so let's just get started with the head moving into the neck. Uh, the head and neck area are a little on the mismatching side. When it comes to the head up here, I feel the oranges are a bit too bright, especially in comparison to the rest of the neck and the body. I guess KOTM Burning Godzilla is forever doomed to just having mismatching body parts because the SH Monster Arts version had it, and the NECA... Actually, I think the NECA was pretty, uh, airtight. I mean, we'll take a look at that in a bit. And while I'm not going to take points off for this, this is pretty much my only complaint here. It's just no matter what angle you look at it from, the head almost feels a little mismatched. Could have definitely used some darker tones to it, and it almost feels like it doesn't have as much gloss as the rest of the figure does, which this figure has quite a lot of, and yet it doesn't look cheap. Mm. Godzilla's teeth are all going to be painted yellow, while the inside of his mouth is going to be this very yogurty looking orange, same for the tongue. I'm especially loving that the little details on Goji's tongue are going to be highlighted in a darker shade of orange, almost reddish. It really helps the details pop. Thank you there, Haya. And overall, the inside of Goji's mouth, fantastic. Despite my issues with the head feeling a little mismatched, I mean the detail on here alone looks fantastic. All the little bumps and grooves and such. Honestly, I feel like a Burning Godzilla here might be one of the better Haya Toys Godzilla figures. Just because its overall look, its paint job and such, really accentuates all the amazing details that are on these figures. And I think the head is the best place to start because, I mean, man, look at all of this. And that is especially present on the top of the head over here as well. Again, the oranges, the everything's over here, it highlights everything beautifully. The little rubbery neck bits look fantastic fantastic. You can see the gills. Again, everything in between the little bumps and grooves over here. It's just so HD. It's like kind of like having a 4K looking figure almost. And just like Atomic Blast Godzilla, all of these little pieces are going to be fully painted so you're not going to have any crazy fall off on them. Now looking at Godzilla's body from a profile shot over here, I mean he looks like burnt lasagna and it's fantastic. All of the different colors that you can practically hand pick in count over here. It's just nuts. We've got black. We've got orange. We've got some deep reds. We've got the beginnings of some yellows over here. It's a cornucopia, my guys, my gals, my pals. And honestly, I think it only gets better when you look at the figure from a front on shot, much like this. The blacks, the oranges, the way that everything just highlights all of the details. It's so very nice. And I feel the same could really be said for the arms and pretty much everything else on this figure. It all looks just damned impressive. And unlike Super 7, I feel gloss really just kind of helps everything here. And look at that. There's like no random color fall off here. It all kind of follows the same beaten path. Like it just matches up and it's really, really nice. It's pretty cool because if you look close enough at certain areas, especially the arms over here, you can actually see little blips of reds and yellows just scattered throughout the overall orange and black paint apps here. And you can really get a hint of that pretty much 
everywhere. Pretty much everywhere. Not everywhere, but pretty much everywhere. Now the legs are going to mostly be orange with the black paint applications on top of it. There aren't going to be too many whimsical colorations going on down here, but it still looks really, really good. I'm not surprised, but at the same time, I kind of am, if that makes any sense. I especially love what was done with Godzilla's toes, the very dirty, dry brushing look to him. It just does something with this paint job that kind of looks like taking a very flimsy rubber puppet and then shining a flashlight through it and then just seeing all of the colors light up. It has that really cool effect where you can tell Godzilla's burning up from the inside. It's illuminating all of his skin and finer details and such and I think Haya did a really good job with this. And you look at the tail where more of all those different colors just come a clashing over here and Ah, oh, geez, it's really, really impressive. And it doesn't feel haphazardly done either. There was clearly some controlled chaos here. There was a plan going into this figure. And again, overall, I'm just impressed with this. I really didn't know what to expect getting this figure out of the box for the very first time. But I can tell you this much, I was expecting to be impressed, and I think I actually came out overly impressed. Not too much going on on the box of the feet though and that's fine that's fine now we got to take a look at probably the most impressive part of the figure and that's going to be the dorsal fins which yep uh got nothing else to say other than yep <laughs> i love that the majority of godzilla's back is going to be this very almost white yellow you can actually see some white in here and then as it comes to a head at the points of godzilla's dorsal fins they just turn orange it just works and it just looks really really good i mean sure you've got some red peeking through here and there and godzilla's back does kind of look like an extra cheesy pizza that i wouldn't recommend eating but again to communicate burning god Godzilla. To make it look like Godzilla is burning up from the inside, I think Haya Toys did a damn good job, and it's not just on Godzilla's back, it's going to be on his tail as well. Now the tail might not be as extravagant as the dorsal fins, as we're kind of just working with, you know, oranges and yellows and a little bit of red and such in a not very impressive fashion. It's still nice to see that the overall color scheme followed the way, all the way to the tip of the tail, and I'm really really happy with it. Yeah, it kind of looks like a nacho and cheese dip party going on here, but I, I really can't complain. Although I will say the orange and yellow is very vibrant here, but as we get to this part of the tail, it kind of dulls out a little bit, almost like they missed out on some brighter yellows. But I'm having a hard time really being upset about that, all things considered, because the rest of the figure is just Jesus tap dancing fucking Christ almighty. I do feel the dorsal fins on the floating rubber neck pieces could have been done up a little bit better. That accompanying the weird, almost mismatching looking head and somewhat less vibrant tip of the tail. Those are my actual only complaints with the figure. I guess if I had to try and complain about something, I do wish the red and yellow was a little bit more present on the front of the body as it is on the sides. But hey, who knows? Maybe that can just be explained. I mean, it's pretty ironic how most of those colors are more so near the dorsal fins Godzilla his back and on Godzilla's tail where he might be feeling it the most. Now maybe that's an argumentative point that people can use. I don't know. I like the figure quite a bit. I do wish it came with a breath effect piece or some nuclear pulse piece, moth wings, something, but 50 bucks for a great looking figure like this with the same amount of articulation as we've been getting. Yeah, I'm having a hard time really trying to talk down about this thing, even with the three areas that I'm a little fuddy about. But for the most part, Haya Burning Goji, I'm feeling two solid stars in terms of paint and detail. And now, before I move over into size comparisons, let's compare this guy to the NECA Burning Godzilla. And I think my favorite part about comparing these two is just that they are so vibrantly different from one another, I can like them both equally for different reasons. NECA's KOTM Burning Godzilla had the important and cool distinction of being molded in translucent red plastic with paint being put on top of him. It's a cool look that I very do much enjoy, except for the dorsal fin paint peeling off on my copy. I don't think the paint was properly sealed. 
I think the term is. But other than that, I mean, just look at these two. It's night and fucking day between them. Be it the bodies, be it the dorsal fins, be it the type of plastic used. There's really something different enough going on between the two of them to really warrant, I don't know what to pick. They're both good. In fact, I might even prefer NECA's version just because of how blatantly 90s feeling it is. I'm falling victim to the nostalgia train, but I don't know what it is about this. The glowing red see-through plastic and just like the paint, even though I wish the paint on the dorsal fins could have been a little bit better. There's something to appreciate from both. I really do like them, and even though Haya absolutely crushes NECA in terms of articulation on this figure, I like the fact that both of these can operate as the same character, but present a completely different representation of the same character. Size comparisons? That's how I'm gonna end that off. Yeah, size comparisons. Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla. Burning Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla. Burning Angurus. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Burning Hedora. Burning Godzilla. Burning Godzilla. How many fucking burning Godzillas do I have? Haya Toys once more proves that our trust in them is not misguided. I mean, at this point, we got GVK Godzilla, KOTM Godzilla, Atomic Blast, GVK Godzilla, Burning KOTM Godzilla, Kong, Mothra, Rodan. I definitely feel comfortable putting my trust in them. And after getting something like this, I mean, the trust should just be there at this point. How many more MonsterVerse Godzillas are they teasing right now? KOTM Atomic Blast Godzilla? I think that might be it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>